today we're in East Lothian and we're going to go foraging. It's a March morning and it's been quite chilly. There's still a little bit of rain coming down, but all the spring veg are now starting to come up. So we're going to find some lovely wild spring greens. You can go anywhere to forage. Um, you're not allowed to do certain things, like for instance, you're not allowed to dig up a plant by the root without the landowner's permission. And obviously you have to use common sense, you know, you can't go foraging in somebody's garden. But we have a right to roam in here in Scotland that's, that's really nice and means we can go pretty much anywhere. Ah, here's a treat. These are the buds off the bramble, which later on in the year goes on to produce blackberries. And um, they've got a really interesting flavour. You really do get a really strong coconutty flavour. Sometimes what I do is that I dry fry these with some pine buds and a little bit of salt to make a really nice snack. I'm not an expert on thistles, but all the thistles are actually edible. Really, really spiky. But what happens as they get bigger is that they get a sort of central shoot come up that the flower's going to be on. And what you can do is to cut those shoots out and what you're left with is a um, white coloured long stem which you can chop up and just steam like you would asparagus or something else. And they're really good for you. Down here under this hedge you've got a really succulent patch of sorrel. Um, this is related to the sorrel that you can buy in the shop sometimes. They have a really sharp citrusy flavour that's absolutely gorgeous. You do need to be aware of the fact that there are some very poisonous ones and it's always best to go out with somebody who knows what they're doing to start with because that way you'll be really, really sure. And if in doubt, don't eat it. Woo! Look at that. Oh, it's beautiful. Well, you don't want to pick the seaweeds off the beach, but one of the nice things in Scotland is that all of the seaweeds you can find in Scotland are edible. So out here you've got the start of the carrageen and that's this curly looking one that's growing here. So what I'm going to do is just gently cut it up off above the growing point because if you cut them they'll just grow again and they'll be there for everybody else to enjoy as well. What you want to do is to pick lots and lots of this and then clean it and dry it and then keep this for making all your puddings with. On this particular stretch of coastline within an hour's circular walk, I would expect to find between 80 and 90 culinary and medicinal plants. You know, we're really lucky up here in that we've got this, this wilderness with, you know, a population that's still manageable and we don't have the same pressure on the resources. And that makes it a real treat. For many years, this site was just like a bomb site. So there was a building which had been burnt down many years ago and it was just rubble and it looked a total mess. Five years ago, we cleared a lot of the rubbish and gradually over the next few weeks started getting raised beds built and uh, we turned it into this community garden, which you can see today. Each year, people can apply to have the ownership of a raised bed for a year. So I share a bed with a young family. In the summer, we like we grow potatoes, and last year we had tomatoes also. And yeah, we also always grow salad in the rocket. With the rocket, I think it's too spicy, but I like eating most of the other things. My favourite job is probably dig up the whole pot and fill it in again. Yeah, we always have strawberry plants, but we don't get a lot of strawberries from it. Also raspberries. Just to begin with, to actually see and, and remind people where food's coming from, right? I mean, just to see where it's growing and, and, and uh, that it's not something that sort of grows in supermarkets, you know, and to help them make, make choices about the, the kind of food that they want, you know, and why this potato is great, you know, and why this lettuce, you know, tastes so good, you know, and, and also see that people care about it and care about the food, care about it being locally produced, um, being good for you, yeah. This is the spring fifth birthday event, and now my friends come from far and wide when there's an event on, because you know you're going to get just the tastiest, freshest, food in the city. I think you know the, the community proved that the skills, the cooking skills and the growing skills are still here and can be shared to the younger generations. I think the garden's so successful because that's what's at the heart of it, food and people coming together to share.